to be honest, I never had any ambition, period. I, I didn't know I, I was gonna end up in music. I think that ultimately, God is a uh, specific purpose for everyone. And it just so happens that I found mine. And I'm really grateful for that. Well, my childhood was not, not your, your ordinary experience because my dad uh, only worked for one company his entire life. He was a banker. So that entailed being like um, moved around a lot. But I think it had a sort of effect on me because I was never really able to establish enough ground to be like really friends with a few people because every other year we'd leave. At some point, I think I just I, I just gave up. <laughs> And kids didn't like me anyway because I was always the new kid in town. I was small and I didn't talk like other people. This is the eldest. It's Dennis and then Vin. Some of you may know him as the frontman of Periodico. And there's... Dennis is a doctor. Vin is a lawyer and a musician. Marvin is like the corporate guy in the family. And then there's me. When I was, I think, nine years old, Vin, this guy, would um, borrow a guitar from our neighbor and then leave it in his room when, when he went to school. So um, I would sneak in and uh, borrow the guitar and play whatever he was playing for the day and just parang try to approximate everything that he was doing that day, basically. Until I found the song, it's in the chord chart, and then you know, the rest is history. I, I remember having trouble playing the guitar in the beginning. It was a challenge. It still is a challenge that I have short and stubby fingers, they're kind of fat. So it's hard for me to, to, to play the guitar. Um, I had to like do this ergonomic thing where I wouldn't follow the chord chart, but instead, uh, kung saan convenient, magland yung fingers ko. I don't think I ever really, in the beginning, learned how to play any instrument because I wanted to make a career out of it. But when I touched the keyboard and the guitar for the first time, it just felt like I found a, I found a long lost friend, you know. There's a weird connection between an inanimate object and, and the person, but uh, for a guy who didn't have a lot of friends uh, growing up, you know, they were my best buddies. In college, I was a pre-dentistry student and on the day that I was going to take the entrance exams for, for dentistry proper, I chose to stay home. I called my dad. He was at work and then I said, I can't, be, I can't imagine myself pulling out teeth. That's, I'm, I'm sorry. And then he goes, okay, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do music. And he says, son, there's no money in music. I think I almost gave him a heart attack. He remembers that day. I went to UP Diliman and I, I went straight to the College of Music and applied. But they said, Iho, can you read notes? I said, no, that's why I'm here. I'm here to learn how to read notes. And they said, no, you need to have like a basic education. You need to know how to read notes in order to to take the aptitude exam. So I ended up in uh, creative writing <laughs> instead. And then that's when I, I formed a few college bands. Obviously, none of them were ever commercially successful. I had my fair share of, of frustration because uh, at that point, I was, I was decided that, hey, I can really do this. But for some reason, nobody wanted me no one, no one wanted to book me, nobody wanted to listen to my songs. But at that point, because I was a sponge, so I was just learning and learning and learning. Even when nobody wanted to see me play or hear my songs, 
I just kept writing anyway because ano naman talaga it's what I do I, I don't write for for other people I write for myself My college band was playing its last show at Freedom Bar and then that night I was opening for, for a band called Session Road. And then after the show, um, it, they sat me down and, and asked, so you can actually write songs. Uh, when's your next show? I was like, oh no, Psycho. This, is the, this was the last one. So they offered to back me up. So basically, the first uh, version of Sugar Free was myself and um, maybe three-fourths of, of Session Road. People started listening because at that time, I think the band, while not unique, sounded different. Uh, a lot of what I wrote somehow spoke to that generation for whatever reason, I guess. I'm, I'm an ordinary person. I'm just some guy, you know, who writes songs from personal experience, from, from experiences of, of my friends. And then it turns out that a lot of people were going through the same thing at the same time. So it was just parang we kind of formed the community. Yeah, those were the days. Good old days. We released our first album back in 2003, but as early as 2005, I was starting to feel the, the fatigue. I wasn't um, responding well to all all the attention we were suddenly getting because you, you jump from you know somebody nobody wanted to someone who was playing too many shows he didn't even know where he was anymore. And then finally, when when I decided to leave, I felt like I have lost my place in the group. And then uh, in January of 2015, my, my whole family had to sit me down because I was acting very erratically. Sabi nila, um, you, you might want to see a doctor because, you know, um, what you're going through is not uncommon. And nung una, I was insisting, no, I'm, I'm fine. Like, and then sabi ng mommy ko, like, if you're fine, why are you crying? And then I didn't realize I was crying, so um, I went. I went to a doctor, and uh, I was diagnosed with that time with severe depression and an anxiety disorder. Kaya pala, there are times na parang nasa bahay lang ako magisa, tas parang dumidilim yung buong paligid. Na parang you know, it's like a camera, tas gumaganon, close. Yeah, I would have to show up at gigs, like absolutely scared of people. Crowds terrified me. And at some point, my, my manager had to tug on my shirt, pulling me um, closer to the stage. It was difficult in the beginning, but uh, eventually, you know, I, just, parang I, I needed to remind myself who I was. Eh? That I'm a musician, eh? This is what I do. Like I said, I, I, I think God is a, is a specific purpose for, for each person. It's just a matter of when you find it. When I choose to focus talaga on the music alone, it's the only time I feel ano, invincible. Like, sometimes kasi I feel like someone's always out to get me or sometimes someone's talking about me behind my back. I, I have those those episodes, but when I'm on stage, even when the crowd is like dead, ma, as long as I'm in my element and I'm home, I'm I'm safe and I'm invincible at least for the next hour. Hello, thank you all for coming um, tonight. My name's Ebe.
think I ever stopped working hard. My mantra kasi is to always show up and don't show up just because they're paying you. Don't show up because they want to listen to some of your songs. You show up because you want to. You show up because it gives you a sense of purpose. And I, and I, I never lost um, sight of that. Um, I started focusing on the little things like the bar shows, like how many people actually show up and and express like their, their, their um, you know gratefulness because you're still playing and so Dear Tito, hehe. Alam ko napakarami nang nagsabi sa iyo na iniligtas sila ng musika mo. Pag di ko alam ang gagawin sa mga kanta mo, ako tatakbo. Tapos yon, okay na, tuloy na ulit. Pero syempre, mabalik pa rin yung sakit. Di naman talaga nabubura ng lyrics ng kanta. Pero kung gusto ko malaman mo na habang pinapahinto ng musika mo ang sakit, ikaw mismo ang humihilom ng mga sugat. Kaya salamat. Hindi lang ako nakausad, maturuan mo rin akong magpatawad. Wow. Uh, di ko alam kung paano nangyari yon pero sa iyo ko natutunan na dapat sakto lang. Na hindi pwedeng lagi, lagi lang masaya kasi pambalanse rin ng lungkot. Yes, music helps, pero iba pala kasi talaga pag may isang tao kang <laughs> tinitingala yung alam mong hindi perfecto, ask me, at lumalaban din kasabay mo. Kaya salamat sobra sana, dumating din ang panahon na ako rin, maging halimbawa sa iba, gaya ng pagiging ganun mo sa akin. Tuloy lang tayo, sir, padayon. Uh, receiving those letters or having conversations with people saying that, that uh, at some point that I have helped them through music gives me a, a deeper sense of purpose. Mas, mas fulfilling eh. It's not just about writing songs or writing hits. I think I'm done writing hits, uh, honestly. It's just playing music and then if it touches people in any way, in any positive way, then, then I think that's one of God's greatest gifts, you know, to be able to help.